Welcome to the final episode in our series of webinar shorts. The purpose of the series is to illustrate some of the best practices we use to help our clients find new customers through targeted marketing campaigns. In this episode, I'll focus on improving the media planning process through campaign measurement and optimization. My name is Philip Keith, and I'm the Director of Product Strategy and Research and Development at Claritas. Today, I'll wrap up the series with an overview of our measurement capabilities, beginning with the importance of validating campaign execution using key delivery metrics and concluding with how exposure to that campaign ultimately influenced consumer behaviors. Let's start with a quick review of our previous episodes. In 2018, Claritas acquired Barometric and AcquireWeb, two companies with complementary identity graphs and a unique set of solutions between them. With this combined identity graph, we've created a closed loop suite of solutions to transform consumers into customers using strategic campaign planning, execution, and measurement. In the first episode, we learned how Claritas differentiates consumers in a few ways, depending on where they fall within their purchase journey. We use household segmentation to group consumers based on core behaviors and characteristics, helping clients answer more top of funnel questions. Digital properties like company websites and mobile applications can identify and contextualize consumers based on how they engage with those properties. Mobile location technology can be used to identify audiences based on their out of home behaviors. And finally, response based audiences can be built based on how well advertising influenced them in the past. In the second episode, we learned how these audiences are prepared for cross channel media execution. Claritas can onboard them to digital or mobile platforms of choice. We are an ESP and can execute email campaigns on behalf of our clients. And finally, audiences can be reached offline using targeted direct mail campaigns. In this webinar, I'll talk about the value of measuring a marketing campaign. Measurement is crucial to campaign optimization with insights like validating the execution of a campaign, including who ads were served to, the inventory where they were reached, and the pacing of impressions served. Making sure an impression served was an impression seen. That means seen on quality inventory and seen by human eyes. Calculating the total lift in consumer behaviors that resulted directly from seeing the advertisement. And finally, breaking out the lift by different components of a campaign, like target audiences, creative, and property. Now, before we can talk about measurement, it's important to understand media attribution. Cross-channel attribution is the process of linking a consumer behavior back to a marketing touchpoint. Consumers interact with brands across many environments. The key to effective attribution is capturing as much of a consumer's daily experience as possible. We track a number of different exposure and conversion environments and continue to expand through partnerships with data vendors. With our identity graph, it's also possible to incorporate clients' first-party data or any data sets that they directly source as long as those data sets include one of our key consumer identifiers, like postal addresses, emails, mobile ad IDs, or IP addresses. These identifiers, as well as several others, which collectively make up our identity graph, are the backbone of attribution. Using them, we're able to see how, for example, direct mail advertisements influence people to purchase an item from the company's website. Any combination of activities across these exposure and conversion environments is a possible conversion path, which I'll talk about shortly. Attribution, as we'll see, 
is a critical step in understanding the consumer's purchase journey and how marketing helps them navigate it. In order to link an in-market behavior back to a marketing touchpoint, an attribution window has to be created. Attribution windows are look back periods that begin with consumer behavior, something like buying a product, and extends backward a consistent number of days. We typically use a 30 day attribution window. If a household is exposed to an advertisement during that period, we consider their conversion an attributable conversion. This slide illustrates how these windows are anchored at the point of conversion. On March 1st, a purchase was made. Looking back 30 days, we see this household was exposed to two advertisements, one within, within a mobile app and another through a search engine. These are called working impressions because they have the ability to influence behavior. Let's look at another scenario. We see a display ad that doesn't actually fall within an attribution window. Although it might contribute to the long term impact of an ad, we can't assume that it has a short term influence. Highlighting this point are the concepts of recency and relevance. Recency ensures that we're not attributing a conversion to an exposure that occurred a year ago. So think about if you're exposed to an ad today and then you made a purchase in 12 months from now. It's likely that the exposure today didn't have any influence on that purchase. Relevance ensures that we're not attributing a conversion to an exposure that happens two weeks in the future. So similarly, today I might go out, buy something. If I see an advertisement for that brand in two weeks, unless we're talking about some type of nonlinear timeline, it's not going to have any effect. So let's consider an everyday scenario. Say I'm in the market for some jeans. Last night I visited Levi's website and ordered a pair of their 5.11s. Three days before that, I received a Levi's catalog in the mail, which I happened to thumb through. Attribution is the process of linking the purchase of those jeans with my having looked through the catalog. In other words, Attribution is the process of identifying whether a marketing touch point, in this case, looking through the catalog, had the opportunity to influence my in market behavior, which is purchasing the genes. This process is the foundation of campaign measurement. Campaign measurement helps answer the question what's working well and what isn't in terms of campaign performance. If we're not seeing the level of response that was expected, the first thing we want to check is if the campaign was executed as expected. If it strays too far from its media plan, we can't expect it to perform as plans. We begin by looking at some key delivery metrics, things like impressions, reach, and frequency. We want to see that impressions are being served at the right levels across the entire campaign period and that they're being served on the right inventory and to the right target audiences. Looking at these metrics by channel and overall, we can see how levels within a single channel relate to the levels of the overall campaign. This is important because some media are better than others at reaching incremental households or net new households while others serve as an effective reminder through cross-channel frequency. And because immediacy is important, these reports are available in real time. So any issues that are found can be addressed quickly, getting the campaign back on track with as little disruption as possible. Even if the campaign aligns well with its media plan, there are still chances for unexpected situations like ad fraud or poor viewability. It can be surprising to learn that a campaign wasn't effective at driving response, and even more so 
when it had nothing to do with strategy. Things like poor messaging or reaching the wrong target audiences. But rather because ads were served on incorrect domains or served to bots or because an ad format was incompatible with a particular channel and just didn't load properly. The sooner these issues are discovered, the sooner advertisers can course correct and again, minimize the disruption. With this information available in real time, an advertiser can address invalid traffic concerns with publishers who may not know an issue is taking place. If there's no clear path to resolution, advertisers may want to place their ads on other inventory. If an advertiser is buying directly from publisher two, as seen on this slide, and that publisher discovers its traffic is being sourced from a third party that has high levels of bot traffic, they may address the issue immediately by restricting purchased traffic from the main source of bots. That can provide assurances to the advertiser. If ads placed on publisher three was a result of programmatic buys, the advertiser may simply want to avoid that publisher in the future. Ad fraud estimates range from 6.5 billion by the ANA to up to 19 billion seen by Juniper Research. eMarketer reports that just over 50% of desktop and mobile ads actually pass viewability standards. A simple online research will provide many more statistics like these. So it's important to monitor ad fraud and viewability. While advertisers can debate which audiences or creative will be most effective, there's no debate that high levels of fraud and low levels of viewability are bad. Let's shift from campaign delivery over to campaign performance. Consumers can experience any combination of marketing touch points along their path to a conversion. Some channels are effective at directly driving conversions, while others work better in combination. It's apparent from this slide that display ads are an important part of this campaign. Not only do they directly influence 45.1% of attributable conversions, but they assist in three more conversion paths accounting for an additional 38% of conversions. Maybe less apparent is the impact of connected TV ads. If we were to only look at last touch attribution, we wouldn't see much influence from this channel. Given the premium CPMs for connected TV inventory, the channel may run the risk of being removed unless its contribution can be better understood. Although it doesn't directly drive conversions, it assists in two conversion paths, influencing 18.5% of attributable conversions. Maybe connected TV ads provided a strong introduction to a particular category need, and only through reminders in the form of exposures from display ads or email ads did the consumer actually convert. Removing connected TV risks losing this introduction and ultimately the conversion. Focusing on the third path, the audience that contributed 15.6% of total attributed conversions may not normally respond to display ads. Seeing ads on their connected TVs may have created brand awareness and consideration, which ultimately led them to convert. These are critical steps in a consumer's purchase journey. A conversion path analysis summarizes what a consumer experiences before a conversion. Again, these are opportunities to influence. We still need to know the impact of those experiences. Some people who are exposed to a marketing campaign will perform the behavior being measured, regardless of that exposure. In fact, that's how target audiences are often created, based on past purchase behaviors. 
a high level of conversions doesn't necessarily mean an effective campaign if those households would have converted anyway. So we need to isolate the impact of the campaign. To do that, we need to calculate the incremental lift of that campaign. A few slides back, we saw that 4.4 million households were exposed to the campaign. Of those, 188,000 also converted, generating approximately 235,000 attributable conversions. Of those, just under 61,000 were incremental, meaning they wouldn't have taken place had the campaign never run. On average, the number of dollars spent per incremental conversion was $41.61, creating a total impact of $2.5 million in incremental sales. Incremental lift is the change in consumer behaviors resulting from exposure to advertising when all other influences are taken into account. A family of five will likely purchase more cereal than a single person household. Someone who attended a ball game in the past will be more likely to do so again in the future compared to someone who's never been to a game. When these factors are controlled for, the difference between those exposed to a campaign and those not exposed is the impact of the campaign. In this case, we see a difference in conversion rates of 1.1 percentage points, which translates to a 34.7% lift. And that 34.7% lift translates into $2.5 million in incremental revenue. Now that we have incremental conversions, which again are the conversions directly generated by exposure to advertising, we can calculate the return on ad spend. This is a metric of efficiency that creates a standardized view of campaign performance. It tells us how many incremental conversions were generated from each dollar spent on the campaign. Return on ad spend can be presented as visits per dollar spent, sales per dollar spent, or engagements per dollar spent, just to name a few. Pretty much any KPI used to gauge the performance of a campaign can be used in the ROAS calculation. On the previous slide, we saw that just over $2.5 million in revenue was generated because of ad exposure. The spend to implement that campaign was $500,000. That means for every dollar spent on advertising, $5.05 were generated in incremental revenue. Many advertisers use ROAS as an indicator for success of a campaign because they can compare it to past campaigns, whether it's their own or others in the category. Along with the conversion path analysis, we can answer two fundamental questions. What does my consumer's path to purchase look like? And what influence did my marketing have on that purchase? The final question that we want to answer is, how do I improve the performance of my campaign? We can do that by breaking out the campaign lift we just looked at. Improving the performance of a campaign means answering the question, what's working well and what isn't? This is one advantage to measuring campaign effectiveness at the household level, as opposed to the market level. That's not to say that market mix modeling isn't beneficial. In fact, it's the optimal solution when advertisers are trying to understand their holistic marketing strategies and how they work together. Understanding what drove performance means understanding which audiences responded better to an advertisement which in some cases wasn't the audience that was targeted. It also means seeing if one particular creative or property or message was more effective at generating a response. It also means determining the optimal frequency levels based on when response begins to level off. 
These are components that advertisers or their agencies can control in order to optimize a campaign. If one audience responds better than another, impressions can be reallocated to the more responsive group. If anything more than five exposures isn't contributing to consumer response, focus impressions on reaching new people instead of reaching the same ones again. These are insights that can be used not only to influence a campaign while it's still in flight, but great learning when developing future media plans. Here, we're looking at which audiences were most influenced by ad exposure. Incremental lift is broken out by each Prism Premier segment, then compared to the amount of impressions served to each segment. That creates an audience efficiency index, telling us that it takes less marketing effort to get young Digerati households to respond to an ad exposure. Although they were served only 16% of impressions, they generated 20% of incremental conversions. This would be a great group to shift impressions toward, and because we have a lot of contextual data on this audience, personalize the messaging and place the ads in more contextually relevant properties. It's these factors that are key to improving the campaign's return on ad spend. Five. Advertisers invest a lot of resources into their marketing because they know better marketing means a better customer experience. Claritas helps its clients maximize their marketing potential by finding their best customers and helping engage them in the right way. Our closed loop framework does this by identifying which audiences have the highest likelihood of responding to a media campaign. Reaching those audiences in the right channels, both offline and online, validating that their marketing campaign is going according to plan, and finally, measuring how well the campaign influenced consumer behaviors. Each step of the process creates an opportunity to refine a marketing strategy and ultimately improve a customer's experience through their purchase journey. I'd like to thank you for joining me today for the conclusion of this webinar series. If you have any questions about the content I covered across the three episodes, please reach out to me directly, or you can call the company line at 1-800-234-5973. To view other webinar episodes and access free resources to help you learn how to optimize your campaigns, go to the link found in the description box below. Thanks again.